Srima Jiva Goswamini has written. Thank you. <laughs> Srima Jiva Goswamini has written. The holy name of God is the very form of transcendental bliss. Just as the divine form of the Lord is. The best evidence of that is the experience of the Mahatmas. Mahatmas. <laughs> Mahatmas. <laughs> I know it <these. laughs> The devotees experience compared to the transcendental bliss of the holy name of Krishna, the bliss of the non-personal Brahmin is just like the water in a moat. A moat. Moat is... Isn't it moat what goes around a castle, like the water that goes around a castle? Mm -hmm. So compared to the transcendental bliss of the holy name of Krishna, the bliss of a non-personal Brahmin is just like the water in a moat. The non-devotee demons could personally see Krishna, the embodiment of transcendental bliss. Demons like the wrestlers, Kanura, Chanura, Chanura, and Mustika, were even tightly embraced by Krishna and Balarama. But instead of transcendental bliss, they only got misery from the encounter. Similarly, the holy name of Sri Krishna, which is full of transcendental flavor, cannot be experienced by non-devotees or offensive devotees. Sri Krishna, Nama Sankirtana, increases the ocean of transcendental bliss which means the ecstasy of bhava. After the practicing devotee reaches the stage of ruchi, ruchi. ruchi, his ecstasy increases even up to the stage of ashakti. Asakti. Asakti attachment to Krishna, asakti. From there, he reaches the stage above, which is like a shoreless ocean of bliss. Thus, the holy names act like a moon above, constantly increasing the ocean of transcendental bliss. Okay. Where's <clears throat> going on? Which when I can hear? Okay. <clears throat> In that rarely attained stage of Bob, one considers even the globe the goal of liberation to be insignificant. This stage of Bhav is rarely attained, even by performing thousands of different spiritual practices, sadhanas. Therefore, in this part of the sloka, the two qualities of Moksha Nanda Lagutakrit. This, 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 this is 
And Sudulabha. Oh, Sudulabha. Sudulabha, which are ascribed to the stage of Rati by the devotional scriptures. Okay. So this chanting <coughs> a Maha Mantra. So I uh, say, I think I. I know Sadhu Maharaj, mm. probably 2007. Uh, at that time, one devotee, just glimpse, show maybe YouTube. Mm. Uh, what, what, what? Just glimpse? Glimpse. Like a, glimpse yeah, you know, like a, yeah, very shortly, maybe a few seconds, or maybe, you know, 10 seconds. So at that time, I did not know Sadhu Maharaj. Mm. So even though, you know, I know another Sadhu Maharaj, <laughs> but uh, this is Bhakti Vedanta, you know, this Mungen Raj Sadhu Maharaj, I don't know, but I just glimpse I saw. So therefore, at that time, I did not so much, actually, I'm, I don't know him, or nothing. So therefore, just chanting Sadhu Maharaj, that name does not so much taste. Oh, just Sadhu Maharaj. I don't know this Sadhu Maharaj. I don't know. Kind of, you know. Then I meet Sadhu Maharaj. Then some kind of, how to say, meeting Sadhu Maharaj means some, some taste coming. This is called Ruchi. Ruchi. And then more meeting, more talk each other, then very strong attachment is coming. This stage we say asakti. Asakti. Ah, means attachment, strong attachment. Say we say attachment. This attachment more strong. Then, then become stage of Baba. Baba means beginning of Brahma. Say, like I say, some, some rabbis at first know each other. And one certain mo moment, or maybe I love her, or maybe I love him. And that stage is coming. This beginning stage, this is called Baba. Or Rati. So like an impersonal Brahma is, you know, I just said Maharaj is some kind of light. Light. Lightning. Yeah, but light, I don't know, you know, I like light, but uh, I don't, I don't attach. I'm not feeling with light. This is Brahma realization. But if we know personally, like a paramatma realization is like, a, you know, some person but does not speak, does not react so much, just standing, beautiful, you know. It's okay, but I don't, I want to hug, I want to talk, but this person does not speak, just standing. You know, I, you know, looks like very beautiful, but I don't, I'm not so much interested. But if personal future there, we can talk, we can hug, then more attachment is coming. So chanting Maha Mantra also like this. And before meeting Sadhu Maharaj, we need some faith. Somebody said, you know, do you know Sadhu Maharaj? Like, uh, <laughs> Radha Charan Babu. He was before coming to Mungenaj Mandir. Maybe, maybe you can say. And say, many devotees, not one, two, three, four devotees. You know Sadhu Maharaj? You know Sadhu Maharaj? <laughs> different place, different person asking Radha Charan Baba. 
Then he said, no, 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 I don't know. Why are you asking? But, you know, I'm interested. Do you know Sadhu Maharaj? Then he's very curious to know Sadhu Maharaj. And then start to listening to Sadhu Maharaj. And maybe start to seeing maybe YouTube or, or joining this international Sadhu Sangha. Then, oh, this person, I like it. I love it. I should meet with him. The kind of face is coming. Then some face becomes strong, decide. Because we have to pay money to go to you know, India. We have to pay some money, spend some money. If no face, we, we may not come here. But some face, some hope, we may come here. So, and then, like a bhakti stage, at first, so everybody knows, but I literally explain. At first, little face called the Shraddha, then started associating with the devotee. Oh, then, oh, this person is very nice. Maybe I would like to practice bhakti. Then start to take initiation and then start chanting mantra, and then do devotional service. This is called the Bhajana Kriya. Then slowly, slowly, this first verse, Cheto Dalpana Marjana, purifying our heart, our dati, our ahankara, slowly, slowly uh, broken, slowly, slowly disappear. Then more faces come. Oh, this bhakti is so good. I should continue more. To continue, we need taste. Guru Dev says, Sadhu Maharaj says, this chanting, what is important? Is number of chanting is important? Well, what is important? Then Guru Dev says, this taste is most important. If we have taste for chanting, then naturally, automatically, we chant. But if we don't have taste, we may stop at any time. So, and then taste comes and strong attachment, and then love is coming. So, Gurudev said, Why? We should go to Arati. Guru Dev used to say, go to Arati. As much as possible, we should attend Arati. Then some devotees think, why? But attending Arati, we feel very nice. And seeing the beautiful form of the deity, every time we are looking for, we may feel something. Then, if we see somebody or some deity every day, every time, then automatically attachment is coming. Oh, this deity, I like it. Oh, I like Lao Dhamma. No, actually, I'm loving Lao Dhamma. The person also, if we are meeting always, then some attachment is coming. And sometimes loving feeling comes. So similarly, if we go to Arati, this attachment to coming, deity's attachment, also holy names attachment is coming. And then what is happening? If we attend Arati, all obstacle, all misfortune is going. So similarly, if we chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, all obstacle, all mis misfortune is going. Then we have taste, attachment, and love. Then we cannot stop it. So in this, so we, have, we try to practice Raga Bhakti, Raga Nuga Bhakti, and try to we meditate Swarupa, our Swarupa. 
So Ananda's Baba was very interesting. From beginning stage, we, me- we try to meditate, smarana. Still, we have some material thinking, material attachment, still we have it. But the taste is increasing, increasing. Then asakti, strong attachment. Then Baba comes. At that, at that stage, all material contamination is gone. Then more spiritual body manifest. So, therefore, this chanting is is processed to our purifying, <clears throat> also at the same time, dividing our love for Krishna. So this is Baba mentioned. And then Baba said, this, this explain Baba Bhakti. Therefore, this part of Shiroka, this part is what is part. Uh, Anandam Buddhi Bardana, Anandam Buddhi Bardana, this part. This shuroka is two quality. Moksha Nanda Raghutta Kri. Moksha Nanda Raghutta Kri and Sudhuru Rama. So, in, the, in that stage of Baba Bhakti, stage of Baba Bhakti, two symptoms there. Moksha liberation is insignificant because already someone who has love, Ishtadev, then Moksha is very insignificant. And then Sudurabha, Sudurabha means very rare. To attain stage of Baba, Ananda and Buddhi, Bardana, this stage is very rare. This two quality. Liberation, moksha is insignificant. And then another thing is Dhrulaba. This very rare to attain. But uh, if we get to the mercy of Guru Dev, mercy of Sadhu Guru Vaishnava, then possible. So this bus, this small uh, sharing. You want to say? Nicely. <clears throat> <clears throat> Raj explained nicely about the symptoms of Baba and before how devoted by chanting holy name coming to this stage. Sorry, I have not my own practice, uh, my own experience about this, only what I heard. Uh, this stage uh, of bhava means devotees uh, starting to feel his uh, eternal mood. Until bhava means mood. And, and then two symptoms come in. Like Moksha Laguta he is laughing. He is laughing uh, about desire to get liberation because he is in his heart so much sweetness of service to Shimati Radhika. For him, no need more something which is less, much less. Shilrupa Gasami is telling, if we will collect, uh, if we will have ocean of liba- ananda of liberation, and we'll compare with small drop ananda from prema, from service, pure service, it's not, un- un- so not possible to compare. The ananda, happiness from the uh, sh- Shuddha Bhakti, means pure devotional service, much more higher. And Sudurlaba, this uh, word means, Su means very, uh, very, so much very. <laughs> Dur means difficult and Laba to get, very, very difficult to get. What is why Srila Rupa Gasami in uh, Upadeshamrita telling it's how important to be careful with devotees who get it. 
because it is our hope. By their blessings, by their glance, we can also get this uh, very, uh, how to say, desirable mood. That is why we, it's, uh, if we see this, it's Shirupa uh, Gosami told, it's like Ganga. If we come into the Ganga in particular season, so much um, dust, so many uh, things, uh, ugly things on the surface. But the wise person, Sadhu, they know Ganga is always pure. What is why they take in uh, bath. And same way, if, we, if uh, somebody would have met Bhavuk Bhakta, who has eternal mood of service to Shimati Radhika, Manjari Bhava, externally he can be ugly. He has, maybe he has some problems with his body, or he has, I would say, mm, his har- charak- character. 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 Oh. Character. He can be, for example, for example, he can be angry person, something like this. Um, but still, uh, it's, it's very important not look to his, his uh, external things, but to see the essence, what his mood. Or because this person who is Bhavuk, who has power, is hope for that person who uh, wants it. This is what I want to add. Very really really beautiful. And uh, oh, I want to share one Anandas Baba's comment. Krishna, kind of Krishna distribute this flooding Shakti all over the world. Means love. Krishna already distribute flooding Shakti, maybe some partial flooding Shakti everywhere. But if our eye covered by Maya, material energy, material ego, we cannot perceive that love. But some fan, someone who open eyes by the mercy of Guru Dev, could see every place, every moment we could perceive this love, Radini Shakti. Means we could see everywhere Radha Rani is present. But we are so covered, I am so covered, we, I cannot see. But Anandas Baba said, but actually, if we flee from Maya, we could perceive every moment, every place, love. So that is Buddha Bhaji uh, last time mentioned Gita. So if we try to see every place love, this this some person, very fortunate person attain Baba, could see everywhere Radha's presence or some kind of Rani Shakti presence. And also maybe Many of them, you don't attend this morning class. <laughs> Good name today, share very nicely. Maybe a little bit I want to share. This very deep. So, there is uh, two kinds of person in this world. Or two kinds of consciousness, we may say. One is thinking. I'm doer. I'm doer. One person can thinking, I'm doer. And one person thinking, no, I'm doer. I'm seer. So Guru Dev is saying, someone who is a soul consciousness or a swarpa consciousness, he's not a doer. He's a viewer. Means doer means some influence I'm doing, some ego is coming. Viewer is not to, not to see, not to, uh, not to influence of any ego. No, actually, sorry, not to influence false ego. Real ego is okay, but uh, false ego is not. 
And that's someone who is doer consciousness. Someone thinking, I'm a doer. That person try to judge others. And then judge others means, generally speaking, we try to see other, the other people's fault. Then if we observe this fault, then we, we, we will get it. But as someone who is a viewer, we check myself, ourselves. Then we try to check how my mind is working, <coughs> how, how, how our body is working, which direction is moving. We remember Radharani, but we forget Radharani. We are checking. This is called the consciousness. Guru Dev said we have to be consciousness, not unconsciousness. Unconsciousness means material consciousness, bodily consciousness. Conscious means we remember Radha. We try to check in our heart. If we do, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, inflow. But if we see, we can be in flow. Gurudev was thinking, 20 years ago, Gurudev was attending Arati. And then at that time, Gurudev taking care of all the temple, temple's uh, work. And the toilet was broken. And then he went to Arati. He was thinking, Gurudev was thinking, oh, how to repair this toilet? Oh, what to do this toilet? In front of deity, Gurudev was meditating toilet. Then, then Radha Muhammad saying to Gurudev, what are you doing in front of me? You are meditating toilet. Don't bother. Meditate me. Then everything, you know, I can manage. So Gurudev at that time realized, oh, actually, meditation should be Radha Mohan, not to material things. This also, we also thinking, in front of the deity, we sometimes we feel so much, you know, problem. Oh, Radha Mohan, I have this problem, that problem, you know. But actually, we should meditate Radha Mohan. So this is good dimension, so I could not explain nicely and not enough time. This viewer and doer consciousness, soul consciousness, swarpa consciousness is viewer. Manjari is viewer. Radha Mohan is doer. But we are thinking, we are not Radha Mohan, but we are thinking, I can enjoy, I am doer. Then many reactions come, many problems come. But if we see, we are seer, we are viewer. Our position is, is service to all living entity and service to the Radha Moha. In that position, everything in flow. So sorry, this is this one glimpse of this, this morning's class. Radha. The Kirtana of Hare Krishna, etc., gives one the savor of full oh, nectar. Maybe you can read this one. Okay. Prat okay. Pratipadam. Pratipadam Purunamurita Suvadana. Pratipadam. Can I ask just which page is? Okay, this is the 13th page of Sikh Shastaka. And the six, number six. Okay, thank you so much. Pratita Padam Purnamrita Varanam. The Kirtana of Hare Krishna, etc., gives one the savor of full nectar at every step. Because this nectar has been infused into those names, 
what to speak of a name. Each syllable contains the full nectar. During the Rapta Yatra festival at Jagannatha Puri, Mahaprabhu could not pronounce the name of Lord Jagannatha fully. He could say Jaja Gaga, Jaja Gaga with faltering voice. Jaja Gaga, Jaja Gaga, Gada 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 Vakana. Chaitanya Charitamrita. With full nectar, the bliss of love for the qualified personality of Godhead is meant. Prema is itself full of nectar and is the cause for relishing the ecstatic divine rasa. Just as there is nothing more Tasty in this material world than nectar, there is nothing more relishable in the spiritual world than the ecstasy of prema and divine rasa. Even the bliss of Brahman, which is the goal of philosophers and mystics, is incomplete. Because there is no variety and element of astonishment in it. Ultimately, the relishable substance, the relish and the relisher will become one, and thus it is incomplete. When one performs kirtana, after prema has arisen, sorry, could you repeat the last sentence? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Even the bliss of Brahman, which is the goal of philosophers and mystics, is incomplete because there is no variety and element of astonishment in it. Ultimately, the relishable substance the relish and the relisher will become one, and thus it is incomplete. Okay, okay. I try to explain it. It's right here. Saying Brahman, the goal is okay. to become one. <laughs> okay, this Brahman is like a wizard quality. Without uh, variety, like uh, if we see light, light is not so, light has no variety, almost nothing. And uh, this prema is, if we want to, if, if we say love, prema, we need two, two persons. Lover and beloved. Here mentioned ladish, the ladish and ladish. Two, two, we need some two person. So Brahman, we cannot exchange love because of no variety, no person. No, no form, form. No, form. no form. So if something no form, how can we talk? How can we react? How can we love without form? Because we have form, therefore we have tendency to love someone, someone who has, or something someone who has form. And also no exchange. Yesterday we had a Christmas. Mm -hmm. So many, I think many family members or many lovers exchange some present. Right? At that time, so we give present, but no nothing coming, no present or no words. Then we feel not feeling good. So this is kind of Brahman. 
So therefore, some philosopher, he said, this say, uh, some mystics, philosopher, the goal is Brahman, but incomplete. Because uh, no variety, no form, no tangible qualities, then we cannot relish. They get peace. Maybe we cannot only be a good thing. Yes. Okay, then I start. They get peace, but peace is not enough. Okay, person is calm, but it's just a base to for relationship for the uh, for no I'm now speaking from Sadaka point of view. Mm. If calm is calm is coming, then you can absorb in uh, what we are reading, she rather as Sudaniti, she will up Kusumanjana, then possible to absorb in relationship and feelings. Mm. Mm. If just come, no, but not Ananda, no, any, how to say, mm, no, any feelings, what is the life? So, and then, interesting, relations. Say, we have many times, we have some news, internet, someone dies, someone has got injured. But uh, if we have no relationship, we don't feel anything. Oh, this person died. Oh, the, I don't know. Mm. I'm not, you know, maybe some, or maybe little sadness, but uh, no relationship, you know, not so much feelings. But if we related, and if, if we like some person died, then we so much feeling. But if we love somebody and die, then we cry. But we cannot uh, have relationship with this light, with uh, this Brahma. So this is uh, Baba trying to say. That's my feeling, I understand. So therefore, Guru Dev is uh, stressing, we need relationship. Even Bhakti without relationship is difficult to go ahead. Without relationship with Gurudev, without relationship with other Vaishnavas, and difficult to go on. So we need relationship. We need love. And then also Baba mentioned, actually, Krishna want to taste our love in the heart. Not only we, we love Krishna, no, actually, Krishna wants to taste our feeling, our love. So therefore, if we have love for Krishna, then Krishna must come to us. If we chant very eagerness, very hankering for Krishna and crying, then Krishna must come. But our problem is <laughs> we are not so much sincere. We are not crying for Krishna. We are crying for ourselves. That is uh, my problem. But if we cry for Krishna like a child or like a baby, the mother has to come. So this is... Uh, When one performs kirtana after prema has arisen, one sees Krishna at every step while hearing, chanting, and remembering. And one fully relishes the taste of God. The heart, which is filled with such love, will attract Sri Krishna and is full of intense bliss. This, according to Sri Rupa Goswami, is the final stage of devotion called Prema Bhakti. Seven, Sarvatma Snapanam. 
When the whole self is bathed, one experiences the smell, form, taste, touch, and sound of God through completely pure senses, mind, and intelligence. Just as the senses, the mind, and the intelligence are nourished when the tongue eats foodstuffs, so also are the senses, all the senses are showered by the rasa of transcendental bliss through the performance of Nama Sankirtana. The tongue is immersed in ecstatic rasa by chanting. The ears by hearing it. And along with that, the mind, intelligence, and the self become immersed in the ocean of ecstatic chanting rasa. When one gets this taste, an increasing greed to taste even more rasa arises. Sri Rupa Goswami writes in Vigdakra Madhava, when one chants, one desires millions of tongues to chant. When the sound of the name even slightly touches the earlobe, one desires billions of ears. And when the holy name dances in the courtyard of the heart, all the senses become inert. Oh, I don't know how much nectar these syllables creep and sh mm. contain. Mm. No, thank you. How can I describe the sweetness of the holy name? Who has made it? And with what kind of nectar these two syllables, Krishna? Mm -hmm. Yaduna Takura. Yaduna. Okay, just to stop. You want to say this, 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 uh, I said, beloved, this, you know, Krishna's master. You know? Yes. Mm. Want to share something? No, no, it's okay. So this is this Rupa Goswami is, I think, Vidagda Madhava. One day he wrote some poem, and then Mahababu Mahababu understand Rupa Goswami's ability. And then Mahaprabhu asked Rupa Goswami, please leave what you wrote, please share with us. And then he shared this, this verse. Tunde Tanda Bi Ni Latin, this, this verse. This two syllable, Kri Shuna. Is how much sweetness is coming? How much nectar? And then he glorified this Krishna's holy name. Like, just like Krishna is dancing on the tongue, a full of nectar. And the Rupa Goswami described so nicely. And then Raman Raya was shocked. This is not poet. This is like a drinking nectar, a drinking nectar from ears. This is amazing. Like, Raman Raya said to all the devotees. And then Mahaprabhu gave, uh, said to, please, please all devotees, please give blessing to Rupa. Then uh, he can, he can, I forgot, you know, he can taste or he can love more nice, nice, beautiful things. And so this is uh, describes how much nectar 
and Lhasa in the holy name of the Lord. And this verse 7, Sar Sarvatma Snapana. No, sorry. Yeah, Sarvatma Snapana. <coughs> Completely our Atma. What do you mean Snapana means? I remember it's like Snapana. Yeah, this is, yes, I also I agree. This completely, completely yeah, our souls completely inundate nectar of like kind of lassa and like ocean of lassa. <clears throat> Just a few days ago, we are this, this, uh, you know, we are discussing sometimes Baba Anandasva mentioned we, we want to cross the ocean of lassa. <laughs> Then some devotee asked him, what do you mean crossing Rasa? Ocean of Rasa. Not oh, ocean of Rasa. And then many devotees chanting, could you share this? Is it? Oh. <laughs> um, it uh, happened uh, <clears throat> after yesterday. We read the prayer of Krishna to Srimati Radhika. Mm. When he's asking, he's telling, oh, Rasa Nidhi, ocean of Rasa. Mm. Please help me uh, not drown, not uh, be awake and to cross this ocean. And the question comes to the mind, for which purpose Krishna wants to cross this ocean? If this ocean is rasa, from rasa, rasa nidhi, blissful ocean, why he doesn't want to go deep? <laughs> <laughs> why he wants to cross and left this ocean? And then... Uh, one devotee told, it's not doesn't mean he wants to left. It's a, it has other meaning. And then uh, we remember, yeah, because, for example, uh, Radha, Shimati Radhika, and Krishna, they, they are like one third of night, not complete, one third of night, but Krishna already under influence of strong waves of her bubbles, received so much ecstasy, ecstasy what he could not be aware he is like Ananga, become Ananga. And then he need help to be, how to say, arise. Mm. Because Shemati Radhika and he has desire uh, much more. But he already, uh, how to say, could not do anything. Like a fainting. Yes. Yeah, fainting. Yeah. In unconsciousness. And what is why he is asking, praying to Shemati Radhika, please help me to cross, means to receive all what you prepare, everything. All drop, sorry, Adi. And also, more go beyond, more taste he need. Like a premat symptom is not to satisfy. So he want to go more go varda, more go varda. I want to taste more. Mahaprabhu say to, you know, Rupa, Rupa Goswami or sometimes Ramandaya, Swaradam, please talk more. I want to taste more. So, Radha Chanam Baba said, sometimes Krishna so much ecstasy fell down. So we cannot, Radhika cannot taste anymore because Mohan fell down. So at that time, Manjari came, Manjari sing very beautifully song, you know, sometimes with Veena or sometimes other instrument. Then Mohan was ecstasy and then wake up. Then again, another Leela will start. So this kind of Leela is one Leela and then go another Leela. Then taste is more increasing. So this is also one, one kind of interpretation. Anyway, so this is this actually Krishna's two shirabu, so much nectar. But even Rupa Goswami said, I don't know. I don't know. Because Krishna's unlimited, Radhika's unlimited, Radhika's Mahababa. How can our small brain we can understand? This is very beautiful. Mm. 
How can I describe the sweetness of the holy name? Who has made it? And with what kind of nectar? These two syllables, Krishna. Since time immemorial, the living entity has been wandering around in the desert of repeated birth and death burning in the scorching heat of the threefold material miseries. Only the nectarian flavor of the holy name of Krishna can immerse each atom of his mind, body, heart, and senses in paramount transcendental bliss. Srila Satanana Goswami writes, the nectar of the holy name is manifest only through the sense of speech, but it inundates all the senses in its own sweet flavor. The nectar of the holy name is manifest only through the sense of speech, but it inundates all the senses in its own sweet flavor. That takes like the Tiamas The question is what is inundates? And inundates is like takes over. It's overflow, yeah. Overflows, yes. Yeah, there's Overflows. so much rasa. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, like a tsunami, like, you know, drown. Too much water is coming. We can, like, For example, uh, during Arati Kirtan, and leader of Kirtan, he is in special mood with relationship with Radha Mohan, start to sing in, in ecstasy. Mm -hmm. And so many dirt is coming, and some, ha some has problem in his mind with some in relationship conflict or some difficulties in his service, like this, in thinking about this. But the ecstasy, ecstasy of this joyful kirtan, like on in a date or overflow, everyone's everyone forget everything and started in ecstasy also, jump and sing like this. Yeah, like a Satinata Baba Kiruta. You know, it's so ecstatic and so beautiful. And, uh, you know, heart is like a dancing, like a Mahamantra is dancing in the heart, also in the ear, also in the tongue, you know. So beautiful. And it inundates all of us. Yes, yes, yes. We also, we also feel like kind of, you know, feeling. It's funny that you have this external war, like in the song, I have more an internal image for the description here but it's so personal you know? what you what you feel when you read it yeah yeah <laughs> this is something in silence like happening with really in, in inside it's so different just no? how you perceive it oh yeah yeah so a kind of you know externally kind of symptom manifest uh, please 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 talk. no i just uh shared that it's so interesting how different the uh, um hmm? Why do they go? I, I, sorry <laughs> how different is the images that come when you read this beautiful poetic wonderful text and of course i can relate to what you now said but uh, always for me reading this it's more an internal uh happening uh, something yeah just i wanted to share that <laughs> Thank you. So, like, so, uh, Bandana Ji is saying, uh, this kind of external thing, also internal thing. She was thinking internal thing, but uh, we, we try to explain external thing. But actually, this internal thing, external thing is very mutually related. Because in the stage of Baba, Inside is deep meditation. 
then externally body also reacting. Like from eye, the tear is coming, and body is shivering, voice is like a choking, you know, kind of sweat is sometimes coming, kind of body symptom, this kind of sattvic verb. So sometimes internal thing also manifests external thing. Also, like in chanting Japa, is kind of meditation is go deep. So that is more, more or less e, e internally go. But kirta more or less go, go externally. So therefore, even though internally meditating, but the external symptom or external expression feeling is more so, more manifest. In this way, the Sri Krishna Nama Sankirtana is always supreme and victorious. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtana. No matter how degraded or sinful a person may become, the holy name of Krishna will be most merciful upon such a fallen soul. Bestow all kinds of auspiciousness upon him and bless him with the bliss of loving devotion. Maha Prabhu has summarized this first verse as follows to Sri Sarupa Damodar and Rama Ananda Raya. The sun kirtana destroys all sins. It purifies the heart and causes all devotional practices to appear. It causes love of Krishna to appear and the devotees relish this nectar of that love. The devotee then attains Krishna and will become immersed in an ocean of nectarian devotional service. <clears throat> so this is the finish of the first Shikshashtaka. So it seems very interesting. This Shikshashtaka describes all the process of self-realization. Especially stressing this chanting Maha Mantra and purifying the heart and also attain supreme goal of life. <coughs> but uh, this question may arise. Just we chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we can get the supreme goal. Yes, but, but, most important thing is that which goal do I want? Which goal do I attain? Which feeling, which rasa, which baba we would like to get? It? I think this is a very important thing. So Mahanidi Madana Gopal Baba saying, before chanting, we need Sankarpa. Means we need Baba. So which goal we want? Sad Maharaj's was, which goal we are in style Baba? We have in friendly love, or we are in Basare Rasa, parental relationship, what well, we have Madura Rasa. Among the Madura Rasa, we want to have Gopi Baba. We want to have Saki Baba. We want to have Manjari Baba. Which goal do I want? Do you want? That is the question. So therefore, 
Anantas Baba mentioned this. He's saying, with Sumarana, we should chant. So, this is, uh, I think, quite uh, important thing. I think. So, if any, anybody have some comments or sharing, we are welcome. I don't know who can now. Then. Okay, thank you. Second mass of six session. And I can. Yeah, maybe we can first. Nam Nam Akari Bakuda, Nija Sarva Shaktis, Tatora Rupitania Mita, Sumara Nena Karaha, Eta Durishi Taba, Gripa Bagaba Mamapi, Duru Daiban, Idrushan, Ihajani, Nam Daga. O oh Lord, you have given us many names of yours to chant, investing them with all your transcendental power. And there are no strict regulations as to when to chant or remember these names. Such is your mercy. O oh Lord, but I am so unfortunate that I have no taste for this chanting. Sriman Mahaprabhu descended with all devotional mellows and indicated the supremacy of Nama Sankirtana in his first verse. Remembering the sweetness of the name, the Lord, since devotion is by nature never satiating, thought. How much mercy Krishna has placed in his names. But alas, I am deprived of relishing their mellows. I do not have taste for chanting these names. The Lord's heart then became filled with humility and sorrow. And he spoke the second verse, pretending to be struggling practitioner, although he is the supreme absolute truth himself. Srila Kavrija Raja Goswami wrote, while humility and sorrow appeared in his heart, the Lord spoke this verse. But the sorrow and lamentations of anyone who hears it will go far away. This means that one will get love for chanting of Harinama and the misery of material existence will vanish as a mere side effect. Another meaning of Dukkha Sokka is that the misery of and the lamentation over one's lack of taste for chanting will disappear. After all, this second verse describes both the great mercy of the Lord as he has invested all his transcendental potencies in his holy name as well as the fact that there is no love and taste for chanting this holy name. Therefore, we have to hear the explanation of this verse with great attention. According to their nature and backgrounds, people have different tastes. Therefore, 
According to their nature and backgrounds, people have different tastes. Therefore, it is not possible for everyone to have taste or greed for a sing one single name of the Lord. It is natural for the practicing devotee to have a particular taste for the name of his favorite chosen deity, Isadeva. Therefore, the all-merciful Lord descended in innumerable forms with innumerable names like Krishna, Rama, Nishrima, Vamana, etc. Apart from the main names like Krishna and Rama, the Lord also has many other names according to his births, activities, attributes, and pastimes. Some of his names that are related to his births are, for instance, Yashoda Nandana, Nanda Kumara, Dasharati, etc. The names that are related to his activities are, for instance, Govardhana Dari, the lifter of Govardhan Hill, Putana Moksana, the redeemer of Putana, Amasari, the enemy of King Kamsa, and Ravanari, the enemy of Ravana. The names that are related to his attributes are, for instance, Dayamaya, Dayamaya, the All Merciful One, and Bhakta Vatsala, he who is affectionate towards his devotees. And names that are related to his pastimes are Damodara, he who is bound with a rope around the belly by his mother. Rasa Vihari, the enjoyer of the Rasa dance, and so on. Everyone chants that name which he likes the most, and thus purifies his heart and is blessed by attaining prema, love of God, and the service of the Lord's lotus feet. The greatness of such chanting of one's favorite name is clearly described in Srimad Bhagavata 11.240. As a dedicated devotee thus sings the name of his beloved deity, his heart melts as his anuraga, sacred passion, appears and he loudly cries, laughs, sings, and dances like a madman, not caring for the external world. As a dedicated devotee, thus sings the name of his beloved deity, his heart melts as his anuraga appears, and he loudly laughs, cries, sings, and dances like a madman, not caring for the external world. In his Sararatta Darsini commentary on this verse, Srila Visvanatha Chakaravati explains that prema is infused into the heart of the devotee while he chants the name of his beloved deity, and he loses sight of this external world because he sees the enchanting transcendental pastimes of the Lord day and night, he laughs and cries. During such transcendental revelations, the devotee may see that Krishna enter some cowherd woman's house to steal butter. When the old woman spots him, she cries out, catch the butter thief, catch him, and comes running out. When Krishna hears her screaming, 
he becomes afraid and goes off. Such a funny pastime makes the devotees laugh. But when he cannot see Krishna anymore because he ran off, then he cries. When Krishna hears the crying of his beloved devotee, then he reveals himself again. And the devotee sings about his form and qualities and dances in great ecstasy. <clears throat> So, uh, this must mention the uh, Ishtadev, beloved deity. So, Gurudev used to say, oh, Yes. Radhi, sorry to interrupt. Chanting, chanting. Uh, is the miracle of uniting uh, the material and the spiritual. Wow. Yeah. Let, uh, sound is material. It's vibrations of, of, of material things through the air, of molecules. Wow. But where does it come from? It comes from deep down in the body. It comes from a place where thought and feeling is transformed into sound. Wow. And let's remember that the word Atma means breath. So the more we chant with juice, <laughs> juicily, the more we put love into our chanting, the more the, the internal side, the spiritual side, becomes strong. We can also chant reading a pizza menu, but this is dry and empty. When we're chanting and thinking of God, then the sound becomes full of juiciness and becomes spiritualized. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, actually, this sound is, uh, it seems a material sound, but uh, it's not a material sound. Borokero prema nada, prema nada, harinama sankirita. This maha mantra is not in this material world, come from Goroka. And uh, holy name, and uh, holy name is completely spiritual. And then Uttavaji mentioned, so if we chant and observe, then we are so much spiritualized. Last time Gita's class, Uttavaji said. Actually, spiritual and material things, something he said, like it's like the same, oneness. But if we chanting and then material thing become spiritualized, and also he mentioned our mind, heart, heart actually same. He also said, last questions. Actually, this also my understanding is to chanting our mind, material mind become spiritualized. Then everything connect our, our sense also spiritualized, our body also spiritualized. So Uttabaji and the and sharing is so wonderful. So if you could share more, we are so, we are so, you know, uh, honored and uh, Uttavaji, you, if you could share a little more, more you know, this is uh, so nice. <laughs> I 
I don't know what more to to share now. So if you want to share, please share. Whenever. Really, you got me. Hmm. Really? I have a, just a quick question. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the last part of that um, that verse, I have no taste for these names. Um, there was a short, a brief comment on that, that um, it's, is it to be understood that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is assuming the mood of this devotee here? Um, because I know personally, like I often have that feeling um, that I'm chanting so much, but still I have no taste for it. In other words, my, I'm just not you know, pure enough to really get to that level of realizing really the spiritual value of it. I'm still, you know, limited. In, in, the, in the mundane. So just the, the the question again is, how do we understand that, that last part of it, that I have no taste for these names? Very good questions. Uh, so this is very contradictory because Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Lord, Radha and Krishna combined, Actually, Radha's mood. Guru Dev say Radha. So, but he's saying, I have no taste for chanting. One sense I can say, because he did Narabhat Lila, he's acting just ordinary devotee like us. Also, one thing, even Radha Rani said to, I think, Gopi, Sakis, Gopis. Radharani has Mahababa. Radharani Mahababa personified person. Even she said, I don't have any love for Krishna. Radharani said, Radharani is supposed to have so much love for Krishna. But someone, someone who attained Prema or Mahababa, he's thinking, or she's, she's thinking, I don't have any love for Krishna. So similarly, if he, even though he, he's tasting so much feeling, because Mahaprabhu has so much feeling, sometimes his body becomes stunned, sometimes his body, like a connection become like stretched, you know, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, sometimes his limbs, legs, and the hand become like a task, like kind of inside the body. So she, he, he has so much feeling. Still, he attain highest stage. Then someone who attain highest stage of prema, then the nature of prema become very humble. Someone, someone who attain prema, he never say, I attain prema. I have no prema at all. What can I get? This is a person, the symptom, the person who attained prema. So therefore, Mahaprabhu, he expressed some who attained prema also same time. No, actually, I have, not, I have no taste for chanting. Gurudev also said, He's behaving like ordinary devotee. He asking all devotee, all the disciples, please give me mercy, then I can make more advancement. Well, sometimes say uh, Gurudev said to you know go to see uh, Binoda Baba, Mahaniji Baba. Then he said, Oh, Sadhu, you say Gurudev. No, I'm not saying. Other Sadhu say. Therefore, I am repeating. 
So this kind of a humble feeling. So Anandas Babaji mentioned, Tulema and humbleness is almost the same. Mm. So someone who attained Tulema is extremely humble. So therefore, this sentence, it seems contradictory, but actually, I feel it described Mahaprabhu, uh, the, the honest feeling is a kind of symptom of Prema, or maybe, maybe Mahababa. That's my understanding, my, my feeling. I think, Maharaj, anyone who says, <clears throat> I have no taste for chanting, is lying. Because <laughs> just, just the thought, a single thought of chanting, if one molecule in the body has enough love to think the thought of chanting in love, then this love will grow. It's a seed for a tree that will grow. Love only grows. Love creates love. Wow. And if there's a chance to open the mouth and let out a breath with a tiny bit of love in the chant, mm. then this will come back and, and grow. Mm. The love comes from Radharani, goes back. Love creates love. There's nobody who can think the thought, say the word, who doesn't have enough love to start and increase and increase. So, but uh, someone who attain Prema or Baba, he or she want more. Go Bardha, I want to taste more. I, I need more, I need more Seba. I did not do anything, so I need to more. This kind of strong feeling mm -hmm. is, is coming up. Let's see, like a Bilapak Sumanjari. Ragnar Das was so much hankering and so much feeling, express so much humbleness and also so much strong desire. So this is interesting. Love makes, love makes more, love increase, or I forgot. Mm -hmm. The, in, the, energy, the energy in our love, in our, in our lungs, that makes us breathe, this is yeah. the Radharam. Yes. Wow. If you are alive, you have a molecule of energy of love to, to start chanting. And, you know, actually true, because if we don't have any taste, then we stop chanting. But we want to, we cannot stop chanting. If, if somebody says, you know, I give you a million dollars, please stop chanting. <laughs> so we say, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I don't want a million dollars. <laughs> we don't want a million dollars, you know, let me chant. I think most of the devotees say like this. So therefore, Uttama is in you know, correct. <laughs> It's about the intention, I think Gurudev says. We can teach Siri to chant, you know. <laughs> yeah. But here there's no juice. It's the intention, the juice that makes us open our mouth and chant, it's, which is the sign of the love. Prema. <laughs> Yes, it's okay. Oh, good they want to share? No. 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 Chanting the name will give all realization. Sometimes we do, and after that it happens. Only you have to watch. 
is happening. And more realization coming. And I feel that if you chant and you in between you stop chanting, maybe you got some ecstasy or nap or something, and again you wake up and you feel that you are. Japa is moving automatically. <clears throat> or sometimes you see Japa is stop, again you start chanting. It's also in between period is chanting. And slowly, slowly, automatic realization starts flowing to me. What you do whole day, it comes to your dream. What you do whole day, what you think with chanting, also you, one day will come that you will see face to face. In my vision, in my dream, or in my thinking, it happens. This all through the chanting happening. And the last maran also is happening at the time of chanting. Then your japa start not moving, you enter in the last one, in other seva. Others will think that you are sleeping, but it's something else happening to you. So Vrindavan is a place to come and relax. <laughs> How much you can relax? Automatic free flow will start. If there is a will, there is a beautiful way here. <laughs> that Guru Kripa. That is Guru Kripa. Guru can remove my all ignorance. Avidya. Prem Bhakti Jahavati. When the greed will come. Avidya Vinasyati. Vede Gai Jaharachanit. Just now, Jananda Maharaj is telling what is avidya. My bhav is not a sai. Which mood? I have to connect myself. What is the seed of cling? Cling seed is. 
राधा मोहन राधिका दासी दैट इज द सीन ऑफ माई क्लिंग हाउ वी पुट वी मेडिटेट इन दैट सी टू ग्रो दिस इज गुरु कृपा थ्रू द मंत्र कमिंग टू ग्रो दैट सी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ प्लांट and protect from the wheat that guru can do and is spraying the love water and fertile that that it grow plant fast and by his mercy he make the fencing with the devotee association that no other big animals come and eat it mm-hmm. fencing of the devotee help us mm-hmm. to increase grow more and more our plant what is put do they put the seed inside he protect everything when all his expansion in the form of my brother my family everything all he expand in different way to help us every day is sunday but no holidays surprise will happen by Then we start living in the surprise only. <laughs> <laughs> And who not want to live in this name? We will start to live by faith in the surprise again. Not really. Yeah. Yeah, good day. Radhe Radhe. Yes. Can I share just one small things? Um, sure, uh, sure, please, please. Uh, first, uh, first of all, I want to express my gratitude to all of you and Guru Dev, especially, and to all of you, um, because, and I want to share one little things. Um, how is amazing just by just by knowing our Ishta Deva. and uh, who am i in the relation with him how so much things uh, revel revolt to us by hearing sadhus by reading the same book before they are not the same they revel so much things and also mm, we read before uh, here that uh, baba said that the krishna have in innumerable forms with numeral names like krishna rama nisim gavamana and uh, before like devotee in some matto we used to chant all these names without discrimination now it is something like uh, impossible to do uh, when i was in his devotee asked me to to uh, sing the nishimga in the kirtan and I've, i i didn't have the taste to do that so uh i just want to share these things just just to know these two things and gurudev said to us about ishta deva about who we are it's everything is changed vision is changed and uh, also 
probably also the the taste for the holy name. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Wow. Very nice. <laughs> that is the key point. Yeah, thank you. So I want to share also this point also. Before I chant many deities name, like uh, you know, Radha, Madana Mohan, Radha Govinda, Radha Gopinata, Radha Damodar, etc. But uh, when we start the relationship, then we lost to chant other name of the Lord. <coughs> So Guru Dev is saying, I don't chant another name. I don't go to another temple. Oh, slowly, slowly, I also, slowly, slowly, I understood. Even though I go to another temple, like Kanada, Rama, or Radha, Damodana, we want to see Radha Mohan. We will see Radha Mohan. Why if we go Barishane also, Shuriji temple? So slowly, slowly, so what, why Guru Dev say like this? And uh, actually, we don't need to go anywhere else, which Guru Dev mentioned. One day Guru Dev went to Sri Ji Temple of Darshan, and then <laughs> Guru Dev was listening to <laughs> Radha Rani's word. Why you come? I'm there. Radha Mohan's temple. Mm. Why we go to see other place? Yeah, that's true. Guru Dev is saying true. But of course, some new devotee come, or some devotee want to go, we go. But uh, slowly, slowly, uh, we understand what Guru Dev said. And uh, what, what is Stai Baba? Slowly, slowly, we start to understand it. So this attachment to one name, one Ishtadeva. And also, I say, Guru Manjari, one Guru Manjari. And also, one our Swarupa. This is, Guru Dev also say, very important. If this is missing, then our realization may not come. So this Guru Dev's word is very, very precious. Sometimes we we difficult to understand at first, but uh, it takes time to digest. But uh, we 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 if we have a firm faith on his word then slowly, slowly, mercy coming and uh, understanding the realization will come. That is my feeling. That is it. In the Raghunuga Bhajana of the Gaidiya Vaishnavas, hearing, chanting, and meditating on the pastimes of the beloved deity are also ascertained as the main limbs of sadhana. In the Brad Bhagavatamitra, Srimat Sanatana Goswami glorifies the chanting of the glories of one's beloved deity as the most internal limb of bhajana. The best means to meditate on Krishna's Raja Lila is a splendid process of devotional Nama Sankirtana. The question is now that if any devotee can attain Prema by chanting the holy name of his own favorite deity, then are all the names of the Lord equally glorious? 
In the scriptures, it is seen that the holy name of the Lord is transcendental, as is the Lord himself. And all these names are equal in value. Still, when one considers the different glorifications of the holy name, it is seen that the holy name of Krishna is the greatest of all. If the holy name and the holy named are non-different, avinatavat nama namino, then can there be any doubt that the holy name of Krishna, who is the original personality of Godhead, is also the original holy name? Sri Krishna personally told Arjuna, O oh Arjuna, my name Krishna is the foremost of all the holy names of God. In the scriptures, it is seen that the holy name of Lord Nishrimhadev is superior to the names of Lord Vishnu's dissensions such as Kuruma and Mastya and that the holy name of Sri Ramacharanda is again superior to that of Lord Nishrimadeva. On the basis of the non-difference between the Lord and his holy name, the Padma Purana declares the holy name of Lord Ramacharanda to be greater than the different other names of Vishnu. In the Padma Purana, Lord Mahadeva Shiva tells Bhagavati Durga that the holy names of Vishnu is superior to the names of all the demigods, but that the holy name of Rama is superior even to the 1,000 names of Vishnu. Maybe. So maybe Arctic start. Mm -hmm. So maybe... Next week, we would like to continue. Mm -hmm. So we will explain next week this one. So thank you very much. <laughs>